the class first of all you already know what is this right multiple linear regression model clear right everybody know these things multiple linear regression model so one of the problem of this regression model in this regression model we can write like this way take a look this regression model can be written beta 0 beta 1 x 1 i beta 2 x 2 i beta k x k i plus epsilon i this regression model could be written like that way right one of the problem of this regression model is that this explanatory variable this that and that if this explanatory variable have multicollinearity this variable are dependent on each other there is a correlation understand if this x1 x2 x1 x2 and x k these are the covariate or explanatory variable or independent variable or predicted variable or regressors all the same name if there is a multicollinearity problem so that means these variables are correlated that means there is a kind of dependency among these variable then the estimates ordinary least square estimates of betas inflated Understand? Clear? These betas inflated. These betas inflated means suppose height and weight I put in this regression model and high height and weight are correlated, right? So that means the values of these and that are correlated, right? Right? And then you remember the estimates that I derived that estimates looks like this right x in x transpose x inverse x transpose y clear right now let me show you one thing let me show you one thing if x is your data matrix which has a value like this one two three and Two, four, six, and then nine, seven, uh, eleven. So suppose I have three variables, okay? And three variable axis, I am getting these values, right? This column and that column is dependent, right? If you multiply this column by two, you will get that column, right? Clear? And in such a cases, if you subtract one column from another column, then the matrix will have a column of zero, right? One column will have a zero. So one column depends on the other, right? If I do some mathematical subtraction addition, are you understanding? Suppose I have three feature, three variable, x1, x2, x3. Okay, this is the x1 value, three values, and this is the <laughs> x1 has three values, x2 has three values, x3 has three values. Understand? <laughs> Understand? And if values like this, then if I multiply this by two, then I am getting this column and that column exactly same. And if one column is subtracted from another column, I get one column zero. If column of a matrix is zero, the determinant of that matrix is what? Zero. 
Understand? If determinant of that matrix is zero, then how can you find this inverse of a matrix? Inverse of a matrix, you find adjoint of A divided by determinant, right? If this determinant is zero, so then what will happen? This will export, right? Anything divided by zero equal to what? Are you understanding? Infinity is a big number, right? So that means this and that has a correlation. This and that has a dependency, right? Are you understanding? If there is a dependency, then determinant will be close to zero. And in such a cases, this inverse metric will explode. And this is the inverse matrix which will explode. So a statistician came up with the idea of risk regression. Are you understanding what? That is why I first give you the background. I first be, give you the explanation why. We have a regression. Why you are going to do the risk regression? Are you understanding? The risk, risk regression we will go if explanatory variable has have a multi problem. That means the covariate independent variable, this x size, x, this x size, if there is a linear relationship among them, in such a cases, inverse of that matrix will be a very big number because determinant will go to close to zero. And in such a cases, this estimate will be inflated. This estimate will be inflated. In, with the inflated estimates of betas, if you predict, the prediction will be unstable. Prediction will not be stable prediction. Good prediction. Are you understanding? So do you understand the background? So what is the, if in the exam, if I ask you, when should we use this situation? What would be your answer? What would be your answer? One sentence answer. What would be your one sentence answer? When would you use this regression? What would be the one sentence answer? If multicollinearity exists, there is a linear relationship between explanatory variables, then we have to use risk regression. Understand? So why risk regression in such a case, these betas, 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 betas will have a very big number. Why betas? Because this is the formula for the beta computation. You could ask me why betas? X value are correlated, why beta will be inflated? Because beta has explanations like this, and higher x prime x inverse need to be <coughs> computed. Understand? Understand class? Understand? Okay. Now, in order to do these things, what the statistician has done, they come up with these things. <clears throat> so they said that, well, whatever the correlation would be, I want to put <clears throat> sum of beta uh, j, sum of beta j, j goes 1 to p or 1 to k plus 1, something like that. This must be equal, equal to k. Are you, are you seeing something, some condition, right? Some constraint, right? So, as a statistician, you found that our explanatory variable, when you take a correlation matrix of the explanatory variable, you said, well, the correlation matrix of the explanatory variable showed a high correlation. Okay. Then you have decided, well, as there is a high correlation, all my betas must not exceed 1000 or 100 or 500. Understand? That is all of betas. All of betas must not exist equal to k. Are you understanding? As you have a data, you have a data, and on that data, 
you run a correlation matrix of the independent variable that means explanatory variable and beautiful correlation matrix when you take a look you see that the pairwise correlation is almost very high for each of these cases then you have decided well as the correlation is very high and i want to linear model is multi multiple linear regression model is the appropriate because all other assumption is satisfied there is not a heteroscedasticity problem that means constant variance other things is fine but only problem is the explanatory variable or independent variables are highly correlated or fairly correlated so you have decided well if there is a 20 explanatory variable some of those 20 coefficients of the parameter corresponding to x some of these some of these all parameter because parameter get inflated here parameter get inflated you said that no i would not let it happen i want to put some of this parameter should be equal to k and that could be written as sum of beta z minus k equal to zero then here is p plus one and j goes one to one are you seeing something like lagrange multiplier are you noticing something of lagrange multiplier Did you see that? So sum of base, this is the equation, right? And this restriction I'm going to apply on there. My purpose is to, what? My purpose is to estimate parameters from there. This is my fundamental equation. This is my fx, right? Under the restriction that. Understand? Under the restriction that. Shapali, are you okay? You remember here, I want to estimate, I want to maximize these things. I want to find what values of X and Y so that this X, X square and Y square equal to one. That is the condition, right? That is the condition, right? So that is what I have started discussion. So a statistician said that, well, let us do it in this format in this format. That is, that is the I, you said K, right? Why K? Why not? So there should be number, right? There should be number. I want some of these estimates must not exceed a certain number. As I do not know certain number, I just put the K. For example, in this case, I put here, x square plus y square equal to 1, right? But here, I put k. Is this k in the number of parameters? Yeah. No, 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 that is say. Thank you for clarifying these things. This is equal to c. It is just a constant. It is not there, no connection between that number of parameters and this is C constant. Thank you. Are you understanding? Any question? How will we understand that if P is equal to C, then the multipolinearity on the parameter? Okay, multicollinearity, whether exists or not, once you have the data, you can run the R or Python code and see the correlation matrix of the X, right? So take a look. You, you have a X1, X2, and all the way X30, right? And then X1, X2, all the way X30, right? And this is a pairwise correlation. This is always one, right? And there is a correlation between negative one to positive one, right? Okay, corresponding p values you can also find. And then by looking at that correlation matrix, if you see that the pairwise correlation among explanatory variables are very high. And then you said that, well, so I, instead of linear regression model, you are going to use Ries regression. Clear? That decision should be taken after 
seeing a pairwise correlation matrix. Clear, right? Okay. This is just the background. Now, what the statistician said, this is my original X beta. With that, they have added these things. Lambda, sum of beta uh, j square j goes 0 to if there is k, so that means up to k, 0, 1 to k minus c. This is the equation now. Understand? This is the equation now. Similar to the Lagrange, right? Exactly similar to the Lagrange, right? So down the road, if you have any question, well, we understand this regression equation, very fantastic, no problem. But why they have added these things? The added that things is just they are adding some penalty, some regularity, regularity conditions that well. So the betas could be very high, but my sum of betas must not exceed a certain conditions. Are you understanding? At least, are you okay with this? This is the this is the function. This is the uh, mathematical notations of the least regression. Let me open my note. Where is it? Here. Here. Yeah. <clears throat> So take a look in terms of like, uh, if I want to write it in a error sum of a square, which could be written as sum of yi minus beta xi square plus lambda sum of beta uh, J, I instead of I, I should write here beta J square. And then I want to write here, suppose a constant C in here. Okay. So in this case, if you start plugging I equal to 1 to N, suppose there is a N observations, right? I equal to 1 to N, right? N observations. Okay. And then here again, if you want to write here, you can write how many axes is in there. All of those things you can consider in here. You can also put here like beta j, something like that in this way. But these things, if you remember the third week material, when I derive the solution for the multiple linear regression model, this could be written as y minus x beta and y minus x beta. So in the second, in the third week, third week lecture, I have, this could be written like that format, okay? This could be written like that format. And then plus lambda, this could be written as beta, like this, lambda c. This could be written, in this format in the matrix notation this could be written in this format in the matrix notation are you okay are you understanding if you have a confusion from this line to that line what's that video third week third week video okay This is just multiple linear regression model with, so more specifically, more specifically, if you want to write here, you can write here J and then here is J. Then it will make more sense.
more specifically, if you want to write this multiple linear rotation, then that should be the beta j and j like this. So now if it is written y prime y, y prime x beta minus beta prime x prime y minus <clears throat> beta prime x prime x beta plus lambda beta prime beta minus lambda c. So this is to beta prime x, y. These two are the same. If you take the transpose over there, they will give us the same result. Right? If you take, take the transpose over there, they are the same, they are scalar. So that means if you multiply Y values with the X, X matrix, this is a vector, that is a vector. Y is a vector, X is a matrix, data matrix, design matrix, and beta is a vector. So one is Y, Y, Y prime is a row vector, X is a data matrix or design matrix, and beta is a column vector. So if you multiply these things and that things, they are exactly same. They are exactly same. So that could be written like this way and like this. Understand, right? And in the third week class, I give you explanation for that one. Okay, look at that video. So now in this case, if you differentiate these things, S, S, with respect to beta, beta is our target, right? Then what we have in here, we have in here two X, Y, and then here we have uh here we have in here it is gone in here we got here two one beta is gone then there should be there should be okay i have to make a manipulation certain manipulation in there y prime y that is fine to beta prime x y that is fine for this one i have to make a manipulation like this x prime x plus how did i get lambda prime this is should not be lambda prime this is just the lambda and This is just the lambda i, and then here is the beta minus lambda c. So take a look at that. These two is same. Here I take these two things common. This, this and that is common. So this is coming in here, that lambda coming in there. So lambda come with the identity matrix. So that is why I put their identity matrix i. That is the identity matrix. This is known as the identity matrix I. Okay. So now if the derivative has been taken, then it will give us this result. X transpose X lambda I 
and then here is a beta equal to zero. So if we integrate this, we will end up with this. Now there is a vector, uh, vector and matrix uh, calculus. So those like you could ask me question, there is a transpose, but you are taking this. Ultimately, you will get these things. If I want, it will take maybe another uh, one hour or maybe at least one hour to describe how the met calculus operation is done over the uh, transpose of a matrix or vector. So that is why I just don't want to uh, time in there, okay? But you are always welcome to visit my office to learn more about how the calculus operation, differentiation operation work on the vector or matrices. So in this case, now we see these results <clears throat> because there are two betas. Here is one beta and here is one beta. So there will be a two. Okay. Beta square, if you differentiate it, then it will be two beta. Okay. So from there, if you do these things, x prime x plus lambda i beta equal to x prime, um, that should be x prime y. Because when uh, you will do these things here, this should be x prime y, beta prime x prime y. It should be x prime y, x prime y. Now, if you multiply both sides by x prime x plus lambda i inverse, and then if you do these things in here, x prime x plus lambda i beta, both sides you multiply this, lambda i inverse, and then x prime y. So this and that cancel. In both sides, I multiply by this quantity. And then what I'm getting in there, beta prime equal to x prime x plus lambda i x prime y. That is the answer. Okay. That is the answer for our solutions for the Risk regression. Okay. Remember, without multicollinearity, the solution is this. Without multicollinearity, OLS solution is this. With multicollinearity, the solution is this. Okay, with multicollinearity, the solution is this. So I have added the condition this, right? Sum of beta j square, j goes zero to suppose k minus c equal to zero. This is the conditions that I have added, right? Or more specifically, when, when like k equal to like, uh, two, that means two parameters. When there are two parameters, then it should be, then it should be beta one square plus beta two square, right? Suppose beta one square and beta two square equal to one. What is the meaning of this? Can any one of you tell me? What is the equation of this beta 1 square plus beta 2 square equal to 1? This is the equation of what? In Some geometry? Assumption beta area of circle. Area of a circle. It is the equation of a circle. 
Beta 1 squared plus beta 2 squared equal to 1 is the equation of a circle. Okay? Equation of a circle. The circle has origin at and radius radius 1. Are you understanding? Okay. So graphically, what we are doing in here for two dimensional, I can show you. But you know, human brain, three dimensional is okay. But we cannot think about four, five, six, seven, eight dimension, right? At least graphically, we cannot do these things. Right? Take a look at that. This student said that this is the equation of a circle. Equation of a circle with radius one and center at origin, right? So how it works, that is what I'm now going to show you by picture. Okay, so this is your beta one, this is your beta two. Okay, and this is the circle. Okay, this is the circle. So you got beta one and beta two. And corresponding to beta 1 and beta 2's values, if your error looks like this, how? So error is computed like this way, right? Y, I, minus beta 0, minus beta 1, X, 1, square. This is the sum of error square, right? That is the sum of error square. If you, because y's are the response variable or response values x size are also the independent variable right so y's and x's are given y's and x's are given are you understanding y's and x's are given and this is my this is my condition that sum of square of these betas must not exceed one. So what I am doing for different values of beta, the sum of square. So this is known as the least square error function. So least square error function could be like this, could be like that, could be like that, could be like that, something like that. So what they are doing for betas estimate I am bringing, I am dragging them from here to there. So this is my beta 1 and beta 2. Okay. So if I want to show you more, let me log into um, content. And today is the week 6. Let me see. This equation derivation, mathematical background of rigs and ratio. I hope it will be in there. Show me the graph, show me the graph. Okay, if you read these things, I think better graph is in there. So it is mentioned in here, you are plugging beta one and beta two's values. And this is the area of a circle because in Ries regression, I'm using sum of the parameter square. Sum of the parameter square in two dimension is nothing but the equation of a circle. So this is the circle and different values of betas, I am getting contour plot. So all the lines that you are seeing then there. So all the line, all the red lines that you are seeing in there, this is each value of beta 2 and beta 1 and taken, and then I got a value in there. Each value beta 1 I take, and then I will add them. So that's the way contour plot is showing. It's a three-dimensional plot. It is showing. So 
I want to bring them inside in there. Okay. That's the way visualizations happen. So how it reduce because different values of betas, but betas restriction is in here. In this part is betas restriction. This is the part betas restrictions is in there. Okay. So that is all about the discussions, how to derive the estimates of the risk regression parameter. And this is the equation. This is the equation of the risk regression, okay? This is the equation of the risk regression, okay? So this is X beta. X beta is written and then penalty term has been added in there. There is a plus error term. So error term equal to this minus that, which I have written in there, this minus that. This is what is subtracted. This is the error term and plus this is the, uh, what it called? This is called the uh, regularized condition or penalty term. In this regression, the penalty term is known as the circular penalty, okay? Because of this type of equation, circular penalty. And regression was developed, as I mentioned, in 1805, 1805, 1805 by Galton. And risk regression was proposed in 1970. Uh, what is his name? Why did you forget his name? No, I did not forget his name. His name is uh, Horrell and Connard. Let me write their name because we need to remember them. H O E R L Horrell and Connard. Understand? Anytime, if you want to read something interesting, also read the history. Okay, that's the way you might come up with some ideas, something. So 1805 Galton, and there is a multicolonality problem. Horrell and Canard, they come up with the risk regression. Now I am going to discuss about lasso. So this is least absolute shrink case selection. In 1996 by Robert Tipshirani. Forgive me if I make error in his name's spelling. If there is a spelling mistake, there is a um, error in it. So Lasso, what he did, this is Lasso, right? Y equal to X beta plus lambda sum of beta j, j goes 1 to k plus 1, or j goes 0 to k, just 0 to go. This is what known as the risk regression. What he did, he just added this penalty. And he called it as a lasso. Difference is this, 1996.
see little difference right he added these things and it has a lot and lot and lot and lot application okay <clears throat> let me drink little water You understand, right? So, what is this? The risk regression penalty is this sum of beta j square j takes value 0 to suppose k and on the other hand in lesser regressions that is beta j absolute j goes 0 to k this is the difference clear Lot of difference. Little idea make a lot of things. Take a look at that. I have a question. For the equation for the ridge regression, does it have a square for the beta j? Is it beta j squared or just okay? Okay. Okay. Let me explain these things. There is no way. There is no way that these things will go through this point. In this point, beta 1 equal to 0, right? In this point. In this point, beta 2 equal to 0, right? So when this is minimized, like... What value of beta 1 and beta 2 I am plugging is beta 1 and beta 2 I am plugging in there and x1 and x2 is given. My purpose is to minimize these things. The error, the, the minimum the error, the better, right? I'm plugging this thing. So that is the, that ellipsoid or ellipses that is coming down. But they ne can never go through this point. Before going to this point, they touch is in here. So let me show you, um, where can I show that? Let me show you the graph. Um, uh, elements of statistical learning, PDF. Let me see if I can find that. Elements of statistical learning, as the elements of statistical learning. Yes, let me show you. So I want to go to the page 70, maybe 79. Yes, it is coming. What is the difference? I, I will draw, I will also show you. See, in this figure, before it is because when I am taking purpose is to bring it. Is it touching in there? Before touching that, it already touched in there, right? But on the other hand, this one is touching in there. In this case, beta 2 equal to that value and beta 1 equal to what in here? Zero, Zero right? So this penalty can kick out some unimportant variable. Because in this case, in this case, beta 1 equal to what? 0. So beta 1 equal to 0 means variable x1 is 
not important. Are you understanding? So how can I get this figure then? That is what now I'm going to discuss before deriving. This is circular penalty, that is diamond penalty for two-dimensional case. For two-dimensional. How? Let me show you. Take a look at that. My, take a look at that. This is what the equation is, right? <clears throat> Beta j, j take value 1 to 2, okay? So that means this should be beta 1 and that should be beta 2, right? So for this one, we will get four equation. Beta 1, beta 1 plus beta 2. When beta 1 is greater than 0, beta 2 is greater than 0, right? That will be negative beta 1 and negative beta 2. When beta 1 is less than 0, beta 2, you can put here greater or equal to also. Less equal to 0. Do you agree with that? Are you okay? Are you okay with that? Absolute x equal to what? Absolute x equal to x if x greater equal to 0, right? Absolute x, if you take it out, then it will be negative x if x is less than 0, right? So suppose you have a number 7, negative 7. I ask you put a absolute sign. So then you put here absolute sign. So it will be 7, right? But when you take out this absolute sign, then it, you will have to write it original format. Are you okay understanding? So this could be written like that. This is written like that way. Now minus beta 1 plus beta 2 when beta 1 is less equal to 0 and beta 2 is greater than 0. This one equal to beta 1 minus beta 2 when beta 1 is greater than 0 beta 2 is less than 0. Less equal to greater equal to is okay. Do you agree with that or not? So how many la how many equation I got? Four, right? Suppose that thing <clears throat> so take a look at that. If this is equal to one comma zero, that is equal to zero comma one. And that is equal to negative 1 comma 0 and that is equal to negative 1 and negative 1, right? Uh, negative 1 comma 0, that one, right? You agree or not? So this should be beta 1 plus beta 2, right? Beta 1 plus beta 2 equal to 1. Which one? 0, negative 1, yeah. Uh, I do not need your help. So it should be negative 1 and 0. Clear? Uh, zero negative 1. Zero negative 1. 0 negative 1. So that means this one will be what? Minus beta 1, minus beta 2. This is the equation, right? 
and this is what that is minus beta 1 and that is okay and this is all i could write in terms of like positive one negative one something like this right <clears throat> so this equation this is the graph of a diamond right and this is the point of discontinuity right this is beta 1 and this is beta 2 right and as i mentioned earlier my purpose i am discussing in two dimensional various values of beta 1 and beta 2 i put here and i am getting the contour plot this plot is known as the contour contour plot means for all types of values of beta 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 1 and beta 2 i got a three dimensional plot of this one beta 1 and beta 2 together with x1 and y are put in here i got this contour plot so now when it is reduced it is shrinking coming in here there is a high chance that this type of thing will go through this before touching in here. On the other hand, if there is a circular penalty, before it go through there, it already touches in there. So that means their reduction takes place, but kicking out is not taking place. So, for example, let, let, let me again again discuss these things. In this case, take in this case, it is coming to here, and in this case, in this case, reduction takes place in here, but as it go through this, so beta one is kicked out immediately. So 200 years later, after Galton proposed simple and multiple linear regression model together with a estimation process, which is known as the ordinary least square, right? To estimate ordinary least square method, or 200 years later, the lasso was developed. Stanford professor. You understand the graphical thing, right? You understand the graphical thing, right? Are you okay? The people in the last bench, are you understanding? So what you have learned in here, this is called the dimension reduction as well as shrinkage. Okay. So now, and this is a very important book. It contains almost all machine learning and everything, elements of statistical learning. And it is PDF format is available. So important, all statisticians have a copy of it. Okay. <clears throat> now the question is, how can I estimate the parameter? Okay. How can I estimate the parameter? <coughs> I think you can take a five minutes break. Then I, I will start again. Okay. So derivation of derivation of lasso equation parameters derivations of the estimates of lesser regression parameter. It is better if I put here estimates means how to estimate the regression parameter from lesser regressions. So suppose there are 
एम observations that means rows and an independent and feature or independent variables so in the data set there is a 1 2 3 up to n feature that means variable variable 1 variable 2 variable 3 variable n independent variable and there is 1 to up to m observations this is the scenario okay data structure looks like this this is my data this is my data so from there <clears throat> i can write error sum of square for the lasso and i want to put in a state of beta i just want to put here theta okay and then there should be a uh, that should be written as error sum of square of ols of theta i'm going to explain these things and then my penalty and j goes zero here is theta j okay now if i write like this it is just the multiple linear regression model it is just multiple linear regression how take a look at that i can write here like half i put here half i goes 1 to m and then i want to put here y i minus theta j here i want to go from 0 to like this x i j square this is what i want to write like this <laughs> this is my this is what i want to write as my e s s o l s theta okay if i want to differentiate this with respect to theta j see what i am doing r e s s e s s o l s theta i want to differentiate it with respect to theta j then there should be a m then y i theta j x i j j goes 1 to n like this and then there is a x i j for example if you want to differentiate this d d x of um uh x minus 2 square then how do you differentiate this 2 x minus 2 times 1 right so same thing is in there your calculus knowledge is good i i i i got some complaint from other professor but your response is good i like it <clears throat> so now i got this thing see what i am doing in here 
I want to put like the sum of m i goes one to m i goes one to m x i j y i and then I want to write here theta j x i j okay theta j x i j and rest of the thing I want to write here summation theta k theta i k here k is not equal to j this is the way I want to write so that this line this line I am taking out theta j from there so in this case now k take all value except j understand let me see if you have any question are you understanding this line because you know this guy is very quiet guy is in here so now six of you gang up and they start insulting him okay harassing him six or seven he said that well i want to keep silence now because six of the guys but later i want to target one by one <laughs> understand so now i want to keep silent do not say anything i want to target one by one in order to target one by one are you seeing dj are you seeing j okay i'm targeting one by one so in order to target them one by one when i differentiate this with respect to j i have come up with this idea and from there i took out the j is in here and here there is no j okay this in this case there is no j okay i took the differentiation i come up with these things now take a look at this one okay are you seeing these things uh, are you seeing these things from these things there is a j1 right j take will one two three up to n all of the thing right so i am differentiating with respect to theta j i want to so theta means here theta j means actually beta j in the regression coefficient but i just want to denote it in the format of a theta instead of beta j okay so I differentiate the with respect to the, so one theta j I brought up in here so that theta j is not in there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, k could be one to all the way n except j, except one particular because I'm differentiating it with respect to j. Suppose it is three, I'm del 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 theta three, then it will be three, then three will not be in there k take value 0 1 2 4 5 understand understand so now if you multiply this thing see what i have now i goes 1 to m x i j and then y i and then theta k uh, this is the x sorry not theta this is the x i k i that is the x i k i'm sorry why i did it here theta x i k and then here it will be theta j and sum of x i j square so if you multiply this with that you will get this Okay. If you multiply these with that, you will get that. And rest of the part is this. This part, that part would be in there. Understand? Okay. In this case, there is no theta j, right? In this case, there is no theta j, right? So when I differentiate this with respect to theta j, this part does not have, have a theta j.
I saved it somewhere. Let me see whether I can open it. Open. See, it's gone. So I was in this format. Let me write it from there. Theta, theta j, r, r, and sorry, there theta, theta j. So e e s s. OLS theta equal to I am in this format M I equal to one to this X I J Y I minus summation J is not equal to K or K is not equal to J actually K is not equal to J K is not equal to J and then theta K and X I K plus theta J sum of X I J square M. Okay. See, when I differentiate this with respect to theta J, I got this quantity which does not have J is in here. Okay. <clears throat> So I want to write it in here because x i j this is known this is known this is known this is what theta k theta i j I just want to put here a name suppose rho j I just want to write here name like this and that one I want to put theta j and that one I want to <coughs> name g j so this one equal to g j that one as it is and this is what a constant quantity that I want to put it in here. J. So now, if you differentiate it with respect to three, with respect to four, with respect to five, that part, whatever you are differentiating, that part would not be in there. Only. Here, x i j square, yeah. So there was a term x i j outside, right? And then there is a term x i j inside, right? When you separate theta j, they, you have to separate theta j with the x i j as well, right? Understand now? Okay, so now this is what we had, then uh, this is what we have after differentiating with respect to that. Now there is a, another term that one has a notation like this. This notation part is this one. That was the notation, which is a function of theta. If I want to write like this, that could also be written as lambda lambda theta j plus lambda k is not equal to j and theta k. Take a look at the at the at the very beginning I wrote lasso regression framework expression right on that part there is a thing like this okay at the very beginning when i put e s s lasso theta then there is the term that term i have written right do you see that okay now in this case in this case, if you differentiate these things, del f theta over del theta j, if you differentiate this, 
then what will happen in here? Okay. So if you, if you differentiate these things, then it should be lambda if theta j greater than zero. Okay. And this part does not have a j, so this part will become zero, right? So that part only has the because this part is divided into the that two part. This part is divided into these two part. Right? Okay. And that one equal to negative lambda if theta j is less than zero. Can anyone of you tell me how does the shape of this function looks absolute x equal to suppose uh, 2. If anything absolute comes like this, absolute x, this is the function. Okay. If x equal to zero, then it is in there, right? If x equal to positive one, then it is in there. Because this is this is equal to x and minus x, right? So fx equal to x. If you plug x, and fx equal to also x. Are you understanding? fx equal to x square. If you plug x equal to one, then fx equal to four. If you if you if you plug x equal to one, fx equal to one. x equal to two, fx equal to four. x equal to three, fx equal to nine. Nine. Right. On the other hand, if, if you plug fx equal to x, whatever you consider x, fx equal to exactly the same thing, right? And then if you plug, if you consider fx equal to absolute x, so that means it will go like this way and that way. If it's negative, then it will be in there. If positive, it is in there, right? That is the way the graph is, is, look, is looking like, like that. And if theta equal to zero, then it will be any differentiation value within the closed interval like this. That has a condition, that has a name, that is called the sub difference, sub differential. Sub differential. Like if you have a problem, theta is equal to zero, why it is negative? lambda to positive lambda, write this down, sub d far ran shial, sub differential, because it could not take just only one value, if someone said that, well, as theta equal to zero, the entire derivative equal to zero, no, it could be between any number, lam negative lambda to positive lambda. If you read these things from Wikipedia sub differential, then you will see this example is given. I have written a very beautiful note, but I'm not going to write it in here. It will be a waste of time. You better read these things. Sub differential. What does sub differential mean? Okay. So after this, now I want to see. I got the differentiation of this part. I got the differentiation of that part now. Here is the differentiation of that part, differentiation of that part. These two differentiation part, now I'm going to add. Now these two differentiation part, I want to add. If I add this now, 
if I write here D A R of sum of square O L S theta plus D D theta J F of theta, we get these things. Minus rho j plus theta j g j plus lambda if theta j greater than zero. We got here minus minus lambda. Rho j plus lambda. That will be the closed interval. That will be the closed interval if theta j equal to zero. That is rho j plus theta j g j minus lambda if theta j it's less than like this. You will have only problem to understand this part, okay? Because you do not know what is sub differential is. You will understand rest of the part. Maybe this is the part where you might struggle. This is the part you might struggle. And that is called the sub differential. Sub differential means what? If theta is equal to zero, it does not mean that the entire differentiation will be zero. It could be any value between negative lambda to positive lambda, which will be coming from when theta is itself greater than zero and less than zero. So that two part, if you have a problem, you just read the sub-differential part, then you will understand what is this. It is just a two, three sentence in the Wikipedia, understand? They have given a good explanation from there. Okay, after finding these things, by equating the first order derivative to zero, we get So I'm now equating first order derivative to zero. Theta. We got these things. zero because now theta is itself equal to zero which will generate theta j equal to divided by gj theta j equal to zero when rho j is greater than this greater than lambda lambda equal to rho j equal to positive lambda and theta j equal to lambda So that would be the solutions where 
square rho j equal to that part rho j equal to that part negative minus x i j m uh, i goes this y i minus k is not equal to j beta k x i k this is what rho j equal to and g j equal to sum of x i j square here i goes on to m i goes on to m these are the two condition in there that is the solutions for this okay Now, what is elastic net? Any any question? So, what is elastic net? Again, developed in 2007 by same Robert Tipshinary and his PhD student. What they have done, in that case, they have done this thing just. Yi minus x beta. Yi minus x beta, okay? This is just the simple or multiple linear equation. Or more specifically, if you want me to write like these things, that should be like, y i minus sum of beta uh, j here i goes on to n or maybe n yeah j goes uh, zero to suppose p x i j okay x i j That is what regression uh, model is, and they are square. Okay. Yeah. Their square is like this. And then you add one penalty in here. You put here lambda one, and then you put the penalty that is called beta j up to. 0 to p and then minus you can put here a constant level of c1 plus lambda 2 you can put here p j goes 0 to like this beta j minus c2 okay so what they have done in In what they have done in 2007, this is a Reis regression penalty. Reis regression penalty. And that is a lesser regression penalty, right? Lesser penalty. I think penalty P E. Understand? When this is what multiple linear regression model, right? This is the error sum of a square or residual sum of a square from multiple linear regression model, error sum of a square or residual sum of a square from multiple linear
regression model. With this multiple linear regression model, if this part is added, let me write in different color. Only with this part is just the least regression, okay? This part and that part is the lesser regression, right? And all this part is called the elastic net. Now, I want to give you some explanation. In our real life, suppose you have a data set that has a 100 variable, okay? Are you understanding? There is a data, that data has a 100 variable, okay? And you are not sure whether the variables are important or not. Okay. And also, you know, the sum of the variables are correlated. Are you understanding? He has a 100, he has a Y. He has a Y. He has a Y, which is the response. He has a Y, which is the response or dependent variable. Right? In addition to that, he also has a 100 access. That means 100 independent variables. Okay? 100 independent variable, he wants to fit a regression model like this, beta 0, beta 1, x1, i, beta 2, x2, i, and beta 100, uh, x, 100, i, plus epsilon, i. How many variables he had? 100, right? He ran the correlation matrix. He said that some of the variables are correlated. And some other variables, he is not sure whether important or not. In such a cases, if he runs elastic net, an important variable will be kicked out and important correlated variable will be shrunk. Correlated variable, their parameter estimate will be inflated because of correlation, right? So that's the things. Let me write things. What least regression do alone? Least regression shrinking. the parameter estimates. This equation. Parameter estimates are shrunk when independent variables, predictor variables, explanatory variables are correlated. There is a pairwise correlation among variables, in such a cases, your design matrix will have a singularity problem. Finding the inverse of this matrix will be, uh, inverse matrix will be very big. In such a cases, parameter estimates will be inflated. In order to deflate parameter estimates from the regression model, this regression you can use. What lasso does least absolute shrinkage 
सिलेक्शन ऑपरेटर वट दे डस वट दे डू दे कीक आउट they kick out an important variables okay they kick out an important variables so now what elastic net does lot of variables suppose 100 axis an important variable kicked out and important correlated variables parameter shrinks okay yeah if your data is very big lasso cannot do one thing what take a look this is a very important thing suppose you have One, two, three, four, up to one hundred rows, one hundred observations, one hundred data points. You understand rows, right? This is the first person, second person, third person, one hundred, and you have a variable. How many? One, two, up to suppose three hundred variables. Clear, right? Lasso can kick out up until. Two hundred variable they can kick. After two hundred variable, the unimportant variables they cannot kick out because this is the dimension of the data. They cannot go below the dimension. Listen, how many variables you have? Three hundred, right? Suppose in this three hundred variable, two hundred fifty variables are unimportant. But lasso cannot kick out all through two hundred fifty. Lasso can kick out only. Equal to the dimension of the data. That is the important thing. Are you understanding? Your your data dimension is how many rows? One hundred. You have one hundred rows, one hundred observations. But you have a variable three hundred. In this three hundred variable, suppose two hundred fifty are unimportant. In this three hundred variable, two hundred fifty are unimportant. But lasso cannot kick out below two hundred because they can kick out the the number of rows, the variables that are equal to because number of rows is one one hundred. You have the three hundred variable. They can kick out two hundred up to, but they cannot kick out two hundred fifty. For the high dimensional data, so you could ask me, hey, Professor, where can we get this type of things? Yes, you can get this genome sequence, genome data. Okay, so in mid nineties, America started and give provided funding to find the entire genome genome sequence of the human body, so that if that could be identified, if a person's entire body, all the genome things could be done. then based on that personalized medicine can be developed that means the dose that i give to you will be different from the dose that i give to you because your genome sequence structure resistance power and antibody creations all of these is different from him the personalized medicine personalized medicine that they are thinking about this so in 90s american government spent a lot of money millions millions of dollar that they want to find the genome sequence of each and every person okay they have identified lot of thousands like 70 80 000 genome project in 90s read this very interesting thing if you read outside of the box your knowledge will increase sometime you may might come up with some new ideas so you understand what is personalized medicine right they target each person because his genome sequence is different is um, antibody creations is different Uh, his uh, like resistance power 
uh, is different compared to the other. For example, COVID killed younger people less compared to the older people, right? And kids are not killed around the world. Very few kids are killed or died by the COVID, right? They killed all the old people and some. So that is also one of the limitations of lasso. In such a cases, as you cannot go beyond 200 and remaining 50, they could be shrunk, okay? So let me discuss a little bit about the homework. I want to go there and then open in here. Okay, just uh, that is the homework. Okay, for this homework, you must use C1 B D H S data if your student ID number is even. If your student ID number is odd, you must use C2 CPD data. Okay. Yeah. Uh, fit a multiple linear regression model. First of all, you feed the regression model, and then I said here. Um, dependent variable and at least 20 predictor variables from this data. Okay. But do not use ID. ID variable, if you use, if I see in the code, you will get zero. ID is not a right. Are you understanding? You cannot use ID, right? ID is just a number, right? 10, 11 digit number ID you cannot use. Provide rational for selecting response variable, write down all regression parameter estimate. You must include height and weight as predictor variable among those 20 uh, predictors. Height and weight are HT and WT are height and weight in C2 data and RH and RW are the height and weight of the C1 BDH data. Run the risk regression instead of the multiple linear regression with the same response and predictor as in problem one, write down all the regression parameter estimates, write a report by comparing regression estimates between problem one and problem two. You must notice shrinkage estimates of the parameter. Okay. Run the lasso regression instead of a multiple linear regression under the setting in problem one, compare the results between regression estimates of the problem two and problem three. So, so now, all the regression estimate you side by side put and then write a report. So after running multiple linear regression model, I found following estimates. But when I run on the same independent variable and dependent variable, I found that uh, 20 regression estimate got shrunk. Okay, I see the shrinkage of my estimates. That's the way you have to write and most changes is done among these three or five variables, okay? And then you said that when I run the lasso regression among these 20 variables, I found seven variables are not important. So those are kicked out and their estimates are equal to zero. Are you understanding? And then you finally write the elastic net and you can show the difference. For, for these five, four different approaches, you will see. So once you get a job and work on the predictive modeling, uh, suppose you start working in a bioinformatics where genome data is in there and you are asked to sort out some um, techniques. So this is one of the predictive modeling that you can apply, okay? Then you said that, well, these are the variables are important. I'm going to use these things for my final model, okay? Write down a detailed report or maybe short report. I can write a short report. And uh, you include all of these things. And if there is any uh, graph is in there, you can include that graph in the figure. I, I ask you to do the homework by using Python, okay? Because you can also use the R. I haven't provided any code for this one. Enough preparation, enough training has been given on the R. 
uh, um, Python and R. So you have to write your code, okay? Data has been given and you have to do this. So when I go through, I will see this thing, okay? And there is a lot of complaints going on that the student do cheating from last year and this year and among themselves, okay? So there was a meeting in the department today. They said something, so be careful about those things, okay? Now, I want to tell you one thing. So before 1970, what are the method they used for? So suppose there is a 20 axis and one Y, right? So before 1970, 1970 risk came, right? How did people, how did people uh, do the best combination of access in the model? What they do, this is known as the stepwise, stagewise, stepwise, stagewise, forward, Backward, those things nobody use anymore. What do you mean by forward selection? So you start with this y, beta 0, beta 1, x1, and then e1. Then you add it y, beta 0, beta 1, x1, beta 2, x2. Okay? And then they did here. Beta 0, beta 1, x1, beta 2, x3. Okay. This is the way all types of combination has been done. And for each model, they find the R square value. And then they from that way they select the best model. Are you understanding? Before 1970, when we are undergraduate students, we learn all of these things stepwise, stepwise, forward selection, backward selection. Forward selection means they go one by one. Backward means from the back, they will come to the front. They study with the full model, then take out one by one, and then take out two, take out three. Okay? So these things no more used. Understand? So have you learned something? Sure? So do the homework, read the documents. In that way, so far you have learned five predictive models. How many fingers? Okay. <laughs> so you learn five predictive modeling. Those are Gaussian regression, negative binomial regression, lasso regression, elastic net, and risk regression. In addition to that, multiple linear regression, right? Okay, now maybe I have I want to discuss two more minutes. Your bus is at uh, eight twenty. Eight twenty, your bus at. Okay, maybe I I, I will I, I will discuss uh, this zero inflated portion, zero inflated negative binomial next time. So I'm going to stop in here. Few students say they have a bus at eight twenty. I'm going to stop in here. Okay. Next week I will have a discussions about your midterm that is coming before thanksgiving okay so the materials that i have covered i will discuss on that oh sorry spring break sorry spring break bye i want to extend